Now you may well remember that in the last episode I mentioned I may well be turning around at Devizes. Well, you'll have no doubt guessed from the title that I've decided to soldier on. This means this morning I'll be heading west out of Devizes and going towards the city of Bath. This means taking on the 29 locks of the Canehill lock flight. I can't wait. Mere bagatelle. Fortunately, a friend of mine is coming up from Salisbury to lend a hand. Join me as we tackle the remarkable Canehill Lock Flight and find out some of the facts and figures behind it. Later, I get wedged in a lock and, as I near Bradford-on-Avon, spot some beautiful craft. We join the cruise on the seventh lock. Two boats obviously made an early start from the bottom and are exiting the lock. And, by good fortune, I've also been joined by another boat. There are also a few CRT volunteers at hand, but I think we've got more than enough people to work the locks. The lock flight wasn't completed until 1810, and before then, Goods were unloaded and then transported on a horse-drawn tramway between devisers and fox hangers. My good friend Chris is working the locks with the wife of the holiday boat and their two sons. Whilst two people work the lock that we're in, the other two go and set the lock ahead. The 29 locks rise 237 feet in a little over two miles. Because of the steep incline where the flight of 16 are built, there are very short pounds between the locks, and the 7 million gallons of water required each day are stored in the 15 large side pounds. Each side pound contains about two Olympic-sized swimming pools of water. Every time a boat passes through a lock, it uses 59,400 gallons of water. Twenty minutes later and the low cloud has burnt off, leaving blue skies stretching west over Wiltshire. By now, we're all operating like a well-oiled machine and we're getting through these locks in about six to seven minutes each. Cane Hill, being the spectacular flight it is, has a huge number of gongoozlers. Some of the paddle gear can be quite stiff. The construction of the flight obviously required a vast number of bricks and so a brickworks was constructed at the bottom of the flight. The area marked is the site of the clay pit which was used to make the bricks and also to line the canal. In places this pit is about 45 feet deep. By 1818 there were 70 60 ton barges operating on the KNA. The river locks between Newbury and Reading were constructed in the early 18th century to accommodate barges of this size, so this was replicated along the length of the navigation. Now to put that into perspective, the usual cargo of a narrowboat working on a narrow gauge canal is about 25 tonnes. Gas lighting was installed along the flight in 1829 so that boatmen could operate the locks during the hours of darkness and an extra shilling was charged for using the flight at night. The journey between Newbury and Bath usually took about three and a half days 
Now that's pretty incredible considering it's 57 miles, 79 locks and 13 swing bridges. This though was much quicker and cheaper than transportation by road. We crack on, and maybe it's beginning to take its toll. At last we've descended the 16. That means we've done 22 of the 29. Seven more to go to get to fox hangers, and these are all in longer pounds. I get off and do some filming, while Chris gets a bit of a break. The last cargo travelled the flight in 1948. A back pump powered by the CRT solar farm at Fox Hangers is now used to pump the 7 million gallons of water around the flight each day. After all that hard work that I didn't do today, there's only one thing for it. I would like to say a big, big thank you, not only to Chris, uh, but also to that lovely family for all their help coming down Cane Hill today. So, uh, great job everybody. Cheers. The following morning, I set off again along a fairly undistinguished stretch of canal. A two mile pound with no locks. And then it's a further six locks and two and a half miles to get to Semington. I've set Semington top lock and I've noticed an approaching boat, so I wait. I squeeze in alongside and get to stay on board. It's always a benefit having a willing crew to operate the locks, and it's much appreciated. Whoops, looks like I'm wedged in the lock. Some hard reverse and I'm lucky enough to get free. You hear horror stories of people getting wedged in locks. Semington Dock on the left provide all sorts of maintenance services for boats. The canal remains fairly nondescript, until you pass Hilperton that is, and then it opens out into the beautiful canal that it is.
Honey Street. Um, it, was, it was just before devices. I was going past a boat at about 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, I was looking in through the window and there were a couple of having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Curtains were just wide open, not bothered. <laughs> Heron lurking on the left, strange creatures. Coming into Bradfield Maven now, and look at this Dutch sailing barge, or chalk, I think that's how it's pronounced. What a beauty! And another gorgeous Dutch barge outside Bradford Marina. And another. Lots of very nice boats around here. I'd moored in Bradford on Avon and the chalk had moored in front of me. I'm heading off to Dundas now, but the weather doesn't actually look too promising over there, but that, that's for next time. It is indeed a wonderful life. Bradford Lock ahead, and on the left, Bradford Wharf Services. Incredibly friendly and incredibly helpful boatyard. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media. Uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>